Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Our loving Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening. Even the first day in the week of the earth. We bless your name, King of Glory, for beginning with us on a glorious night. We thank you for the lives that you are prepared to change, the stories you are about to transform. We thank you for diverse testimonies that you bless us with yesterday, mind-blowing, ear-tinkling testimonies. Thank you for what you prepared to do today also. For the part of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter and that also onto a perfect day. Yesterday you told, talked to us about common sense and we trust that you will do more even today by your spirit. Our confidence is not in man, but in you alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, we did say that yesterday when we come today, we'll be looking at, we'll be building on common sense. God bless you. Please be seated. We'll be building on common sense. Yesterday, by the special grace of God, we read the book of Proverbs chapter number 21, verse number 16, which says, the New Living Translation, which says, a person who strays from common sense will end up will end up in the company of the death. Praise the Lord. Now, I like to start by saying that everything about life is made happen by common sense. Your education will be useless without common sense because knowledge requires common sense to, for it to be activated. Application is made possible by common sense. Application is what? Is made possible by common sense. Do you know that as a preacher of the gospel, you will never be able to assess revelation from God's word without the Holy Spirit using common sense to interpret scriptures to you. Revelation is just a matter, a matter of common sense. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish or should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that is a verse That statement is a verse. It's pregnant. But what will make it make meaning to you 
begins the application of common sense to that scripture. Now let's apply common sense to that. Common sense simply says, if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. That's common sense. It summarizes the whole book of the stories into a simple line of words. Believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. Why? Because this is God's own way of showing you he loves you. So without the application of common sense to scriptures, revelations will be far. Understanding will be far. That also applies to financial matters. That in a situation where common sense is lacking, you can't make profit in life. Profit is a function of common sense. Amen. Now, I'd like us to read Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, verse 10. Can somebody read that for me? Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, verse 10. If the iron be blunt and the earth is in weight or weighted, in the absence of common sense, there is struggles. You get so frustrated in life without common sense. Amen. You go to see somebody and you've been standing at the front door, you've been knocking and knocking and knocking. Nobody seems to hear that you're knocking. Common sense demands that they are inside the room and where they are is very far. And probably where they are, there could be noise. So what do you do? Tend towards the place where you have the rooms and probably raise a voice at that juncture. Then they will come to know that somebody has been knocking. Common sense demands that you call the person on phone. Common sense demands that you call the neighbor and try to find out, are they in or not? Otherwise, you end up being frustrated. You can spend the whole day at the front of that door, yet nobody's in the house. Oftentimes, people leave their homes, leaving the elect electronics gadgets on. Some television, once the light comes on, it turns on itself. And that might deceive you to believe that people are in the house, whereas nobody's in the house. But common sense demands that you find out. If they are in, people should be able to know. And if by eventually nobody's there, try the back door. Try to check. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that wisdom will bring profit. Wisdom will bring profit. Wisdom is profitable. Wisdom is responsible for profiting in life. Now I like to narrow it down to the fact that common sense is responsible for profiting. Grace the Lord. Common sense is profitable. You're going somewhere to do a particular thing and then you check how much you have and you discover that if you actually, if you do this one, you might end up being stranded and be looking for somebody to beg for money. Why don't you do what you can and live by for yourself a transport and whatever is left undone can be done another day. Then 
throw in all that you carried into the into the production of that thing, and then don't end up standing up by the road begging people, people to help you. And most times, you don't even get the help. Amen. Father, we thank you. I'd like us to read some scriptures here. Proverbs chapter number 2 verse 7 says, God gives common sense to those who are honest. Can we read that scripture? I'm reading the New Living Translation. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7. It says, He grants a treasure of common sense. Can you imagine? So common sense is a treasure. What's common sense? It's a treasure. God grants what? A treasure of common sense. Today, Honest. Praise the Lord. He grants what? A treasure. He, the adjective to which the Bible uses to describe common sense is what? A treasure. In other words, common sense is a treasure. And the Bible says it is not given to the dishonest, it is given to the it's given to the honest. In other words, if you're dishonest, you can never have common sense. Because common sense is not synonymous to dishonesty. Dishonest people can never experience or manifest or operate with common sense. Do you know what they operate with? Dishonest people practice trickery. What do they practice? Trickery. What you call tricks. Why you? They call it common sense, but that's not true. Common sense is only available to the honest. Did you hear what I say? Common sense is only what? Available to do to who? To the honest. Not to the dishonest. When you see a young man who is dishonest, he's trickery or trickish. You see a young a young woman who is you know dishonest. They operate with tricks. They don't have common sense. Because they can't assess it. Why? Because it comes from God. It's a treasure. And can only be given by God. Tricks is not from God. Tricks is from the devil. Amen. No unbeliever, no, I repeat, no unbeliever can experience common sense or can operate with common sense. They operate with what? Tricks or trickery. Praise the Lord. Common sense can only be available, can only be available to those who are saved. Why? It's a treasure. It's what? It's a treasure and comes from God. The Bible says he grants them a treasure of common sense. He grants a treasure of common sense to them. Praise the Lord. Why does God give a treasure of common sense to the honest? 
Tell your neighbor for profit. Tell your neighbor for profit. Let me give you the scripture again so that you can project it. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7, New Living Translation, NLT. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7, NLT. I'd like everybody to read it. Praise the Lord. Common sense makes things easy. It makes life easy. It terminates struggles. It terminates frustration. It gives you an edge over others. It makes you shine in the face of obscurity. It makes difficult situations cheap. It lightens burden. It rolls away shame in the face of confusion. Common sense. I listen to what I'm saying here. It rolls away what? Shame in the face of confusion. Write this down. Common sense is a lifesaver. Common sense is a lifesaver. Common sense is a life saver. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. So common sense is available to the honest and men of integrity. Common sense is what? Is available to men of men of honesty and integrity. He grants, he grants a treasure of common sense. Have you seen it? He grants. Do you want to pray? Do you want God to bless you with a treasure of common sense? What do you need? Be honest. If you ever want God to become your protection through the instrumentality of the of, of, of common sense, then integrity should be your pursuit. How many of us know that people will want to give out their entire life and fortune to men of integrity? When your yes is yes and your no is no, irrespective of who hates or loves you, you can never go down in life. Because integrity alone, honesty alone, will give you access to common sense. And that will protect you from the rain of life. Is a shield. Is a shield. Is a shield. I'd like you to tell your neighbor that in the in the in financial world, honesty and integrity are currency. Where there is honesty and integrity, you do not need collateral. You do not need what? You don't need collateral. Come and keep this one. Do you know why people ask you to take something to collect something? Because they don't trust you. They don't trust you. Come and give your car documents. We'll give you 10,000. What? Where honesty is and integrity, it serves as a collateral. You don't need to keep anything to get anything. Because it is currency on its own. It is what? It is a currency of its own. It's a currency of its own. And so you can't make it in business. You can't make it in finance. You can't make it in, in the world of finance without honesty and what? Integrity. They are power. They are what? Power. They give value to your money. They give value to whatever you do in life. You want to excel in life. Embrace honesty. Embrace integrity. 
I went somewhere yesterday to visit one of our son in the Lord, one of the members of this church. The father is a very sound believer. Sound, when I say sound believer, an intercessor, a man that fears the Lord, an elder in apostolic church, director of finance as a local church, and the national director of finance. He has only two children. But can I shock you? That man would drive his son and drop the son in marbles and pass to apostolic church where he pastors. Guess what? When we visited him yesterday, he said, I have heard so much about you. And I've, I've been looking for a day I will meet with, with you one on one today. I'm so blessed that I have seen you with my eyes. He said, I've heard of your integrity. I've heard of your honesty. I've heard of your righteousness. I've heard of the holy life you live. And I'm encouraged to allow my children to be with you. She said, I've spoken to your daughter. He said, What does she say? I said, She says she will come. I said, No, I can't stop her. Let her follow you. Later, follow you. Yesterday, with my own eyes while alive, I saw the reward of honesty. I saw the reward of integrity. I saw the reward of righteousness. I was weeping out to you. didn't know why tears were flowing from my eyes. Because that is the same way. That is the same way I would have been disturbed. That's the same way I would have been looked down on. That's the same way I would have been rubbish. That's the same way I would have been kicked out. Out of my compound. You got in sheep clothing. You women in sheep clothing. When I was told that the man is a senior man in apostolic, and when I began to hear his ranking, a man who leaves a house by 7 o'clock in the morning, and comes back by what time? It's seven or eight o'clock in the evening. Because he covers a lot of churches under him in apostolic. Will bring will drive his own son Sunday morning and drop him to come to marvels while he goes to other way with the confidence. He said, When I have morning devotion in my house, and he said, the way my son responds to Bible with the depths. Amazes me. Your trumpeter, your saxophonist. He said, when I pick up a scripture, the way he handles the scripture, what? It amazes me. And so I'm challenged to bring him. I'll drop him off. Let him go. Let him go. It's a currency. It will open doors for you. I went there on bike. I came back on boat in boat. When we went, we, the bike took us there. When we were going, they hired a boat to bring us back home. Honesty and integrity. There are hard currency, my dear. When you have an opportunity of calling a spade a spade, call a spade a spade. That reminds me, I ran into that mechanic, that electric, auto electrician, or electro, auto electrician. I ran into him on my street on Sunday morning. The young man who says the girl should have picked somebody's money on the streets. And I said, you can't do it. I picked the money and gave to somebody. I said, when you see anybody crying around looking for 2005, please, if they can tell you the amount, give this money to them. That young man stopped me on Sunday morning and told me, please, sir, I'm very sorry. I want you to forgive me. I made a mistake back then. I held him. I embrace him. I say, you're forgiven. I know you do not know it. He said, the reason why I said that was because I didn't the person you gave the money to. 
instead of the person being the one the money, let the poor girl be the one to give the money. I said, sir, the honor of that money would have been shedding tears all the time. So the best thing to do is to live in the cell. There is nothing anybody in this place or who have left this place will say against me. Nothing. The highest that we say is like anger. I don't have anger. I hate evil. Are you hearing me? I hate evil with passion. I hate the devil. Just like I hate sickness. There are two things I hate. I hate them with passion. I hate sickness. I hate evil. I hate evil. So all those while you people say I'm angry. It was because I was found and surrounded by evil. Men who don't see sin as anything. And because they choked me, my life was ruined. And all you see is an expression of anger. It's not because I have anger problem. I don't have anger problem. But I hate sin. Praise the Lord. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He is a shield. Hear me. You don't need money to excel in life. You need integrity. You need honesty. And you will have others pay your bills all true. Am I talking to you? Hallelujah. The other day, Elder Federal State Woman said something in this place. He said, Marvel started without a pulse. Marvel started without a people. Marvel started without nothing. Marvel's only had a vision. Remember how we bought our first speakers? I drove you in the car. I said, follow me. We went. And I said, we need to, we need this speaker. This speaker. They said, was it 180,000 or 80,000? I don't know. And then we said, we need that drum. We need the other one. We need the, the keyboard. The man said, I don't know you. I said, you don't need to know me. But can, have you ever trusted somebody before? He said, he has trusted so many people. They turn him down. I said, I am different. I can take you to show you the address of the church. But for these things, you're going to release them to us. Look at that there. Didn't we carry them? We carried them. Did we fail them? On the day we gave them to give the balance of these things, we were short of 11,000. And I was on my way to Auchi. I was telling God, your name is Son. When somebody called me on the phone, he said, Pastor, please, are you around? I said, no, I'm traveling. He said, can you send your wife to my house? I want to send her a message of an, an insulting message. And I said, now, what is the problem? He said, the Lord said, I should send my tithes to your church. And I said, mommy, thank you very much. There's no problem. My wife is going to get Get what? Exactly 11 hours. I was not in town. I was in my way collected the money and gave to me. You were the one who went to pay. She went to pay. The next time we went back so we needed something. The young man called. He, he didn't have the mixer. The one up. He didn't have, have it in town. He called the brother all the way in Anambra. The brother said, do you believe in him? Do you know he can? He said, brother, send it. They sent the thing. We took delivery without a dime. And on the day we gave to him, we Listen to that's how we rose to this level. That's how we rose to this. There is nothing in this hall that we had money in our hand to go and pay. Are you getting the point? There is nothing inside this hall that we ever had money and kept and went to buy. That's always been 
our first money. It has always been our first down payment. When we drop that, we go to rest. The act of money comes later and we have never been put to shame. My office secretary was here today when I was, I was very angry with a young man. We were there. We asked him to supply drums and he brought the drums and I told him, that was on Saturday. And I said, today we're going to pay you for the drums. And he keep calling. My wife took the phone and damned him on the phone. Don't you know who you're dealing with? If they say they are paying you today, you should go to sleep and forget about it. Like he's always been doing. Don't call this line again. And when the young man came, what did I do? I damned him seriously. He was taking. I said, the next time I ask you to supply anything here, and then you don't go to sleep and trouble me, I will stop dealing with you. Why will I have such courage? Men who are not honest will not have that boldness. Men who are lacking integrity will not be able to challenge somebody like that. When he came, the money was written. He just counted the money and gave to him. He sat down, counted his money and confirmed. He was paid to please and serve him. He serves him. He serves him. Another day, if you tell him, bring this, he will be falling and rising and coming. Because he knows that if you say it, Does that mean that we have not told somebody we're going to pay your system so that we don't have? A day to that time, if we know that there's no glimpse of pain, we will call. That thing we said has not dropped. Give us system so day. If it drops, we will call you to pick it up. But be sure that your yes is your yes, your no is your no. He is a shield to those who walk in what? He's a shield. If God must protect you, then integrity must be your watchword. If God must protect your, your, your business, integrity must be your watchword. If God must protect that thing you put your money into, integrity must be your watchword. Is there anything you're doing? Whatever it is, no matter how small, my dear, if, you're, if you do not have integrity the small, you will never have integrity when the big one comes. That's why men who don't, men who are dishonest operate with tricks, but men who are honest operate with common sense. Tell everybody again, common sense is a treasure. Tell anybody again, common sense is a treasure. Do you toy with treasures? Do you play with treasure? You would, do you throw it on the ground? Do you trample on treasures? Treasures are valid. They are valued. They are valued properties. They are valued properties. You value them. Praise the Lord. Tell us today that I'm going to be spending much time on integrity. I mean, common sense. I'd like us to look at an ask scripture. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 21. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 21. Look at this. My child, don't do what? Don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. He say hang Hang, hang, hang common sense with on your neck. If you want to hang it on your shoulder, hang it on your neck. But make sure that you hang it. Hear me? That simply says, take it wherever you go. Forget your handbag, don't forget common sense. Forget your wallet, but don't forget common sense. Forget your wedding ring. Don't forget common sense. Hang it. Hang it. Take it wherever you go. The next verse. For they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on the neck. They will add beauty to your life. They will add color to your life. 
Praise the Lord. Some of us are very good at throwing common sense in the world and carrying trinkets on your neck. And then when you get to where you're supposed to be delivered, the trinket cannot deliver you. You wear gold on your neck, but the head is empty of common sense. When they look at the breastplate you're putting on your hand, it's worth 500,000, but without common sense. You have an ankle chain of 200,000 naira, but without common sense. And for it, for they, sh they will do what? They will refresh your soul. They are like jewels in the middle. Now, what does when you're well dressed and you put on those things, what happens to you? It boasts your confidence, isn't it? It boasts your confidence, isn't it? Now, common sense will make you walk with confidence. You are pitched things with confidence. You are pitched life issues with confidence. Hear me? The difference between the great servant of God you have seen in time. Beginning from my father, Bishop Yeriko, to the minister who was coming out in life and ministry, making news across board. It's not that they, you know, they, they carry the Bible and bury in their head. There is a level of common sense they impress me that turn common things into uncommon and then give them an edge over every other person. There's a level of common sense that is a traditional that turns common things into uncommon. And they are giving them an edge over others. The secret is common sense. The secret is common sense. High dimension of common sense. High dimension of common sense. High dimension of common sense. I like to round up here with this scripture. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7. I saw some naive young men, in one in particular, who lack common sense. Why is he naive? Because he lacks common sense. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why is he naive? Because he lacks common sense. Hear me? Whenever you see anyone who is naive in life, what does he lack? The problem is common sense deficiency. Amen. What do I say? Common sense efficiency. Praise the Lord. Common sense efficiency. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Common sense efficiency. Lord, we give you glory. We celebrate your kindness. Lead to Shalabras Kose Peremitus. Lead to Saligra Hospo Prenali de Peketeli Bohotu Shanta. 